So today we are talking about the relationship between veganism and wildlife conservation. Veganism is not a particularly set issue in wildlife conservation. Wildlife conservation is largely about how we navigate our relationship with other species and about how we ultimately cultivate an environment where humans and wildlife can coexist together. People have very different ideas about how that should and can be done. If we all had the same idea about how we were gonna successfully live alongside wildlife, then our jobs would be a lot easier and the world would look like a pretty different place. But we don't have the answers. So there is still a lot of debate around these things. And honestly, I really feel like spreading hate around these issues is not the way to go forwards. So what we do need to do is open up a dialogue and discuss our different viewpoints and perspectives on this. So this video is about the main reasons why for me being vegan just goes really hand in hand with wildlife conservation and also my experiences of veganism and working in my field. I'm not going to be able to cover absolutely everything in this topic. Obviously if you have more questions or you want to discuss certain points in more depth please let me know in the comments, start a discussion or let me know what things you want me to cover in more depth in the future. But don't be coming at me for not covering every single point in this video because do you want it to be a six hour documentary because honestly I do not. If you like this video and if you want to learn more about things to do with wildlife conservation, rehabilitation and veganism then subscribe to my channel, let me know what you want me to cover in future but for now let's get going with this video. So just briefly, a little bit of my history with veganism. I've been vegan for about six years now, and throughout that time I've been working towards a career in wildlife conservation and slowly learning more and more about animal welfare and ethics. I actually went vegan primarily because of animal welfare after watching the documentary Blackfish. It's not necessarily a documentary that classically turns people vegan, but for me it just really highlighted to me how much humans seem to think we can use other species and exploit them for our own gain, whether that is entertainment, display, labour, or for food when we don't necessarily need to. It really got me thinking about the impact my food choices make and I realized that I was in a position where I had no need to eat animal products. You know, I had no underlying health conditions and although back then nowhere near the same amount of alternatives exist that exist now, I was perfectly capable of making do with what I had access to and I had no dependents or anyone living with me that I had to cook for that I had to think about in this decision. So it was a really simple transition for me. And once I made that transition, I I became a lot more open to learning more and I slowly started to learn about the environmental and social impact of veganism as well and honestly the more I've learned the more passionate I felt about my standpoint and the more sure that I felt about what I was doing. I definitely used to have a much more black and white viewpoint of it all but as I have grown up and learned a lot more I've become so much more aware of the different intersecting issues with veganism such as privilege, food poverty, accessibility, health complications and also just access to general education education. So I am now a lot more aware that veganism isn't something people all over the world can just jump straight into. Although I do dream of a world where veganism is more accessible and everyone can be vegan, I understand that that's not our current reality. What I really advocate for now is people who have the privilege and the option to really start incorporating veganism into their lives and also start thinking about and tackling exploitation in our food chain as a whole. But this video in particular is about why for me as someone working in conservation and rehabilitation, being vegan just makes sense. So I'm going to go through my three main reasons that being vegan in my field of work is important to me and then I'm going to answer some questions that I commonly get about my experience with veganism in wildlife rehabilitation at the end. So why to me does it make sense to be vegan if you're working in wildlife conservation? Now there are definitely some people that work in wildlife conservation purely because these animals are important to cultivate a healthy ecosystem. But more often than not, if you're working in this kind of field, it's because you love animals. And naturally, when you're working with them in such a capacity, you start learning so much about their behaviors, their social needs, their intellect, their emotional capacity. And in doing so, you really begin to understand 
understand their value in their own right, not just their value in terms of what they can bring their population or what their population can bring an ecosystem. You start recognizing every animal individually in a way that we already do for our cats and dogs and other domestic pets. And one of the core principles in conservation is if humans are the cause of this animal's suffering or the cause for their inability to live in an ecosystem, then it's our responsibility to step in and to do something about that. And we would never unnecessarily cause any suffering to the animals we are working to protect. So in my mind, why would we cause unnecessary suffering to any animal? I think this really hit me when I was working on a sanctuary where orphaned warthogs had been brought in. Now these warthogs we were rehabilitating and aiming to release back into the wild. And working with them was amazing, they were beautiful animals. But that evening when I went to the weekly barbecue, there was meat being served and people talking about how much they enjoyed warthog meat. Now this experience really made me question where this distinction lay between the animals we help and the animals we eat, especially when that distinction can be so blurred, even when you're on a wildlife sanctuary. I can understand how if we had to eat these animals to survive, we may help the ones that didn't get a fair chance and then hunt and eat the ones that did. And that is actually how things work in a lot of indigenous communities. But if we genuinely do not have the need to eat these animals, then what is this distinction between what we eat and what we help? Many people here would cite the distinction of domestication, but really domestication is something we have created, so why does it devalue the life of an animal? And why does domestication in some cases devalue a life, and in other cases raise the status of a life to something so special we would never dream of eating or harming them? To me, as someone who spends their time giving wildlife a second chance, I believe I would give that second chance to any animal, regardless of their species. And I would never willingly inflict any pain or suffering on an animal, so why would I condone paying someone else to do that for me? All animal species show a complex and sentient experience of life, so what makes it right for me to decide which are worthy of my protection and which are not? The second point I want to make here is that conserving species is amazing, but honestly it doesn't mean anything if we aren't tackling the root causes of population decline. One of the biggest causes is habitat destruction and loss, and this is often a direct result of humans clearing land in order to support our current agricultural system. If we want to sustain healthy ecosystems and protect natural habitats, then we really need to start thinking about how we can use our land to feed our growing population without further infringing on wild habitats or displacing indigenous peoples. In order to produce enough meat to meet our current consumption demands, we first need to grow crops and then we feed those crops to mass bred and overfed livestock, which then in turn feeds humans. Under this system, livestock production takes up nearly 80% of global agricultural land, and yet it's producing less than 20% of the world's total calories. Therefore, if those of us that are able to could sustain ourselves directly from the cropland rather than having the middleman, so to speak, of the livestock, we could drastically reduce the amount of land that we need to feed our population. This in turn is tackling vital issues such as deforestation, habitat loss, and the displacement of indigenous communities. In fact, replacing beef for beans in our diet has the potential to reduce our cropland by 42%. And in addition, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change states that if we were to use our land more effectively, we could cultivate healthier ecosystems that would be more effective at storing the carbon emitted by humans. And natural carbon capture and storage is gonna be fundamental in protecting our planet in the long term. I know many people say, well, you don't need to be entirely vegan for this, we just need to reduce our intake. And if land use were the only consideration, then perhaps that would be true. But we would have to drastically decrease our intake. And for me, with this being combined with other motivations for being vegan, it just makes more sense sense to me to cut it out completely. And again, this is because this is an accessible option to me that doesn't compromise my health and really doesn't have much of an impact on my happiness either. It's how I personally feel I can reduce the amount of land needed to sustain me and my diet and therefore be part of the solution to directly help the animal populations that I am trying so hard to protect. The third 
third and final point I want to make is that protecting these species is great, but they are not going to survive if we don't tackle climate change as a whole, and the same goes for us humans. Now veganism alone isn't going to save the planet. I definitely do not think it is that simple. And honestly, we have a lot of work to do in colonialism, exploitation, and extreme capitalism before we can even begin to think we're going to save this planet. But I do think veganism has a role to play. Although systemic change is ultimately what we're going to need in order to save our planet, there is definitely something to be said for individual action and for making your lifestyle as low impact as you can in your situation. If you're in a situation where veganism is accessible to you, then it can be one of the most impactful individual actions you can do in order to tackle the climate crisis. Studies have shown us that the meat and dairy industry is responsible for up to 60% of all agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. And this is with it providing us less than 20% of the overall global calories and actually only 37% of protein levels around the world. And while a lot of people might argue that vegan food is often imported and therefore worse for the planet, looking at food miles alone is actually a very simplistic way of measuring emissions of our food choices. Studies have actually shown us that the greenhouse gas emissions associated with food are largely generated in the production phase, not in the transportation phase. Some studies even place the contribution of the production phase of food to 83% of the overall greenhouse gas emissions. With this in mind, a meta-analysis that compared various types of food production systems around the world concluded that even the lowest impact beef was responsible for six times more greenhouse gas emissions when compared to plant-based protein sources. And this is all due to the production stage, the emissions of which far outweigh the transportation stage of many plant-based alternatives. So going vegan alone is not going to save the planet. But I like to think that those of us that work in conservation and um, protect wildlife are at least really trying to do our part as individuals and for me veganism is an accessible way for me to not only reduce the amount of land needed to sustain myself and reduce the amount of carbon emitted from my diet but also show my compassion to all species not just the ones that happen to come into my care. So now I'm just going to go over a couple of questions I get in relation to being vegan and working with wildlife. The first one I get really often is, is it difficult to work with other conservationists who are not vegan? Working with people who have different views than you can always be difficult, particularly when it's such an emotive topic such as veganism and also a topic that a lot of people view as a moral commentary. However, I think it's so important for us to remember that everyone has a different lived experience and we can't expect everyone to approach conservation from the same viewpoint. And I've actually learned a lot about the role veganism plays in conservation and the issues that we need to tackle as vegans in conservation from discussing it with non-vegan conservationists. So it really is an opportunity to learn and to challenge your beliefs and really see how you can get your stance to fit into the world and what kind of things you need to be taking into account when you are living your life. So with that in mind, I do try my best to view it as an opportunity to learn and also to remember that people are so much more than these particular beliefs and you really have to see the person behind that and beyond that and know that we are all there because we do have a compassion for animals and although we are maybe expressing it in different ways that is something we can connect on and hopefully learn from each other on. Having said that, yes, it can be upsetting to disagree with someone you work in such close proximity with about something so fundamental to your values. And I do actually prefer working in vegan environments. Luckily for me, there are a growing number of vegan wildlife sanctuaries and conservation sites propping up all over the world as people start to learn a little bit more about the impact of what we eat has on the world. So that's really cool. And honestly, I don't think my options are particularly limited by that. The other thing people ask me a lot is, is it difficult working in different parts of the world being vegan? And honestly, this is something I've never really had an issue with. Um, possibly because I have a bit of a like make do attitude towards life. I'm pretty happy to adjust and to figure things out. So yes, it can sometimes be harder eating out at restaurants or I don't always have a lot of variety or sometimes I need to bring my own things places, but 
it's not really something that bothers me. And honestly, at this point, I've been vegan for so long and I've traveled to so many different places in that time and been in so many different environments that I have so many little habits and tricks that just make it so much easier. So I don't know if you want a video about how I travel as a vegan and how I find different ways to make things work, then let me know. Maybe that's something I can make in the future. But generally, I don't really struggle. It doesn't bother me. I'm very laid back about things and I've always been able to make it work. Another question I get pretty commonly is do you struggle working with carnivores and handling meat? So I haven't worked with many obligate carnivores. I tend to work primarily with primates or with elephants, so it's a lot more fruit and veg. Um, but I have worked with carnivores in the past, I have fed carnivores, and I've had to prepare food for carnivores. Honestly, in this situation, an obligate carnivore needs to eat meat to survive, and so therefore I am not going to not provide that for them. What I think is the main issue here is the sourcing of any meat on sanctuaries. This always needs to be done as ethically as possible, and honestly it's something that I don't have the full answers to, and possibly subconsciously is part of the reason that I haven't really gone deeper into carnivore work. Um, one of the sanctuaries I was at, I know that meat was donated from local farms from animals that had to be put down. I think that is certainly a way to do it. But overall, I do think it's a really tricky issue of how is the best way to source the meat. And again, it's probably something I could do an entire video on. But a short answer to the question is I am willing to handle meat. I am willing to feed animals that need meat. But I would always be asking questions about where and how a place sources its meat and making sure I'm comfortable with that before I commit to working with them. And the final question that I get quite a lot is how do you deal with handling discussions with people of differing opinions? And this happens actually quite often on sanctuaries because you are getting people from all over the world coming and volunteering and particularly when you're working at a vegan sanctuary it is something they have questions about. Now outreach and education has always been part of what I do whether that has been to do with veganism or wildlife conservation, ethical tourism, anything like that. I have always done a lot of outreach. So it is something that I have a lot of experience and practice with, which probably makes it easier for me than for others. The main thing to remember is, and I don't know how many times I have said this in this video, but it is such an important point. Everyone has different lived experiences to you. And a lot of the time when you are discussing these things with people, they're not really meaning to be mean or upsetting or purposely ignorant, for example, of what you're saying. And the only way to really make it a two-way conversation is for you to understand that and also to try and understand things from their perspective and their point of view. Really actually listen to their points and see how you can incorporate it into what you're going to be saying next. I've found that when working with wildlife, a new level of patience is required. And that same level of patience can often be required when you are talking to people about particularly difficult topics, such as veganism. So if you find yourself in a conversation that's getting you worked up or that is particularly difficult for you, take a deep breath and make sure that you are leaving your mind open to criticism and to questioning your own beliefs and meeting someone halfway in certain things. And possibly the most important thing about managing outreach and discussions is knowing when to walk away. There are two situations in which I think walking away from a discussion is actually just the best option. And the first is when the person you are talking to clearly doesn't want to engage with your side of things. They don't actually want to learn or have a discussion, they just want to make their own points. And you are just going to burn yourself out by trying to change something or trying to make your voice heard to someone who doesn't want to hear it. And you have to remember that will go both ways. So if you are acting that way to someone, they're also just going to walk away. The second time is when you can recognize you just don't have the mental capacity for this conversation at this time. If you think having a conversation is going to be particularly difficult for you right now, then you are well within your rights to say, I would rather not discuss this today, maybe at a future time, or even to draw your line on what topics are just off limits for you. If the person then begins to pester and push you or make you feel bad for not wanting to discuss something, that is their problem for not knowing how to respect your mental boundaries. And you should never feel guilty about prioritizing yourself and walking away from a discussion. It doesn't make you a bad advocate, it makes you self-aware. I'm going to leave the questions at there for now, so if you have other questions about veganism you want me to answer, then let me know. Maybe I can do them in a future video. Or I do also have three ebooks all about veganism. So the first one is called Thrive. It's answering 50 common questions about veganism with backed up sources and resources where necessary. Um, I also have Micro, which is all about where to find your essential vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids on a vegan diet. 
And I have the biscuit book, which is a collection of plant-based biscuits that I put together with my lovely mother so that you can always have a sweet treat for every occasion because who does not love biscuits? I'll leave them linked in the description box below along with any other resources I have to do with veganism that might be relevant to this video. And if always, if you feel like you have learned something from this video and want to say thank you, then check out my Buy Me A Coffee, which I'll also link in the description. There you can buy my eBooks, a selection of digital prints, sign up for my membership, or give one-off donations towards supporting the work that I do. Thank you so much for all of your support and I will see you in the next video.